As you can see from the packages behind me, today we are going to be doing a book unboxing. These are all books that I have purchased and been kind of like hoarding for the last like couple of months. Uh, we've got quite a bit to go through and I'm very excited, so let's start breaking open some packages. And the first couple of packages that I want to open are actually really exciting. So this one is from a friend and this one is from an author that reached out to me and was like, can I send you my book? And I of course was like, absolutely yes you can. <laughs> so here's this first book. So this is The Gin Daughter by Rania Hanna. I really hope I'm saying your name right. First of all, the cover of this freaking book is so stinking pretty. But also, of course, the plot of this actually sounds really good as well. Nadine is a gin tasked with one job, telling the stories of the dead. She rises every morning to gather pomegranate seeds, the souls of the dead that have fallen during the night. With her daughter, Layla, Layla, something like that. It's Layla, it looks like. <laughs> At her side, she eats the seeds and tells their stories. Only then can the departed pass through the final gate of death. But when the seeds stop falling, Nadine knows something is terribly wrong. All her worst fears are confirmed when she is visited by Kamuna, Kamana. I feel like I'm butchering all of these names. I am so sorry. Death herself and ruler of the underworld. I love the fact that death, I love the fact that death is a character, first of all, but I love the fact that she's a woman as well. I feel like they're always men. <laughs> Death herself and ruler of the underworld who reveals her desire for someone to replace her. It is Layala she wants. And then the rest of the synopsis basically talks about how uh, Nadine doesn't want her daughter to be Death and how she has to kind of save her daughter. So this sounds so good. Now let's go ahead and unbox the book that I got from my friend. So this is actually a new release that was released in January. <laughs> Basically my friend went to a like a book event for the release of this book and with each ticket that you purchased to go to this event you got a book and obviously her and her husband don't need a copy of this book so she was like do you want me to send it to you and of course I was never going to say no to that. <laughs> so here is my book. I'm so excited. Obviously it was a lot more nicely presented when she sent it originally. Uh, she had it like wrapped up and everything. It was so cute. I actually think I have a video. I'll see if I still have it, but I did like film it while I was uh, unboxing the book, but she wrapped it in like really pretty like wrapping paper and things. <laughs> but anyway, here she is. Here's the book. This is House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass, which is obviously the third and most recent book in the Crescent City series, but also it's an exclusive indie edition because she got it from an indie bookstore. So I don't know what the differences are between this one and like the regular copy or any other copy that's available, but it is absolutely stunning. I'm so, so excited. <laughs> so first of all, here's like a close up of the cover. And I don't know if you can tell, but like the moon and also some of the scales in the snake are like metallic gold which I absolutely am obsessed with. Any kind of like pops of metallic are just the coolest thing. And then I'm gonna take the dress jacket off for a second so I can show you the actual hardcover, which is just plain black, but it has like a really pretty like crescent moon on it. The writing on the spine is in gold, but it has these really pretty like end papers, but also it came with a little bookmark as well. <laughs> it's just got kind of like the same picture as the front, but it also still has like metallic touches to it. Super, super cool. And also it's like extra long, which I feel like is perfect because this book is huge. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and just grab random boxes. I don't really know what's in the majority of these. I know it's in this one because this is like the most recent purchase that I've made. Uh, but the rest of these, like I know what books I got, but I have no clue like what book is in what box. So this will be a fun little surprise. It'll be almost like opening presents. <laughs> which honestly is what these like book hauls feel like, which is why I like filming them so much. They're also like my favorite video to watch. I don't know what it is about watching people unbox books, but it's my favorite freaking thing. <laughs> um, all right, so let's crack this one open. I'm so excited. We have some Lynn Painter. This is supposed to be a bubble. It is very much not. It's just a flat piece of plastic. <laughs> These two books are basically Lynn Painter's two most recent releases. This one was released at the end of last year, I think. And then this one was literally just released like earlier this month. So this one is Betting on You, which is one of her young adult releases. I've noticed that her young adult releases come out in hardcover first, and then all of her adult releases come out in paperback. And the reason I hadn't purchased this one yet was because it was hardcover, but I was looking over all of the other Lynn Pager books that I've got so far, and yes, they are all paperbacks, but they are literally 
all slightly different sizes. Not a single one is the same size. Like these two look like they should be the same, uh, but they're very, very slightly off. Like literally just a hair off on the length. And then these two are her young adults and they're just like vastly different. It's probably honestly because I have gotten these from different places. Like this one, for instance, I did get at Barnes & Noble like in the US. And this one I actually ordered either from Book Depository or Blackwell's, I'm not really sure, but essentially it's a UK cover. These two, however, I'm not really sure what happened because I'm pretty sure I got both of them from Amazon, like potentially even at the same time. And they're just like slightly different sizes. So anyway, long story long, <laughs> I ended up getting this hardcover because all of the rest of the books are different anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the hardcover because oh, it's so cute. There's nothing like on it. It's just a plain hardcover, but I love absolutely love the color of this and then the side of it just says you know the title in kind of like a an off-white kind of color and I think it's kind of cool after seeing this I kind of wish I had have gotten her other two like young adults in hardcover as well but you know it is what it is <laughs> and then we have her newest release again which is happily ever or sorry, happily never after. And this one actually sounds so freaking fun and different. So this one is basically about a woman who is about to get married, but right before her wedding, she finds out that her fiance cheated on her again. And instead of like just breaking off the wedding, because apparently there's like some family issues that she doesn't want to deal with. So she doesn't want to like call it off. She ends up hiring this guy who is a wedding, what do they call it? A wedding objector. He gets hired to attend your wedding and object when the time comes to do so. But then apparently after her wedding, she also decides to like join him in becoming an objector herself and their romance blossoms from there, I guess. I said this before in my uh, like spring books to kind of look forward to video. This kind of gives me like Wedding Crasher vibes and I loved that movie. So I'm excited for this book. Let's go ahead and break open this big guy next. Okay, I basically ended up purchasing the rest of Throne of Glass because Amazon, I don't know if they're still doing it, I'll have to check, but every once in a while Amazon has like buy two get one free and the Throne of Glass series is literally always included in those sales. So if this is a series that you've been wanting to get into, wait for the sales and you get the books for free. <laughs> Obviously not all of them, but you know, some of them. But anyway, the books from this package are Tower of Dawn, Empire of Storms, and then Queen of Shadows. I don't know the order of these books as of right now, but I'm pretty sure that these are four, five, and six of the series. Let's see what we've got in this one. Funny enough, this is the seventh book in the Throne of Glass series, which is Kingdom of Ash. These books are so intimidatingly thick. <laughs> And then again, I did get two other books to do the whole like buy two, get one free. And the other two books that I got, I am literally so excited. We have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Her romances are very kind of like your typical fluffy romances, like the plots, but she always adds like a little bit of like real life to them, which typically I don't like real life involved in books, but the way that she does it for whatever reason, just like makes the story just so much better and it makes kind of like the love story just like the feels you get the feels more uh, this one says when it comes to love emma is cursed every guy she dates finds his true love after they break up but it turns out she's not the only one afflicted with this condition so basically this is about a man and a woman who both have this kind of like curse where whoever they're in a relationship with once they break up that person finds like the one and they're just kind of stuck being perpetually not the one <laughs> until they meet each other and they decide to kind of date each other and then break up to kind of like break their curses, uh, which just sounds, it literally says it on the book. It says unbelievably cute and hilarious. Like that just sounds like what this is gonna be and I'm so excited for it. And then the next book, the final one in this box that I have, I am probably the most excited for, for this entire haul potentially. We have Wild Love by Elsie Silver. Elsie Silver is hands down probably at the very top of my like instant buy author list. I just got done reading the Chestnut Spring series recently and I have been dying, absolutely dying to get into more of her writing. Uh, and this one is in the same universe as the Chestnut Spring series, which I'm very excited for. Uh, so this one is about Ford Grant, who is Willa Grant's brother from the first book in the Chestnut Spring series, which is Flawless. Actually, Willa also has her own story, which is... Heartless? 
yeah, it's heartless. Essentially, Willa is Summer from the first book's best friend, but we also got Willa's story as well in the second book, which is Heartless. And this first book in this new series, which I think is called like Rose Hill. Yeah, the Rose Hill series. This one is gonna be her brother, who's Ford. She's been driving him wild for years. The good kind of wild, the bad kind of wild, but mostly the kind of wild that comes with wanting your best friend's little sister and knowing you can't have her. Forbes may have labeled Ford Grant the world's hottest billionaire, but all he cares about is escaping the press and opening a record studio in gorgeous small town Rose Hill, something that comes to a screeching halt when he ends up face to face with a young girl who claims he's her biological father. Now he spends his days balancing business with parenting a sullen 12 year old, all while trying to desperately keep his hands the hell off his best friend's sister, Rosie Belmont. Uh, and there's more to that synopsis, a little bit about Rosie, but we're gonna stop there because honestly, that's all I need to know, to know that I need to read this. <laughs> and there's like a little signed special page in this book. Oh, there's also a map in this book, which I was not expecting because it's a romance. We have one more big old box from this stack over here. Let's see what's in this one. I'm pretty sure this is the one that I've had like the longest and I have no idea what's in here anymore. <laughs> What is this? Okay. <laughs> I was so confused. So this is what this looks like. And I literally forgot I bought these. If you saw my last book haul, I did just recently purchase The Queen of Nothing and uh, The Wicked King from the Folk of the Air series. And that kind of prompted me to get some more books from the Folk of the Air universe. I don't think it's technically within the same series, but it's within the same universe. I basically got The Stolen Air and then The Prisoner's Throne, which are book one and two in this like spin-off series. But then also <laughs> I got this book, which is How the King of Elfham Learned to Hate Stories, which is basically like a little illustrated novella. It says, before he was a cruel prince or a wicked king, he was a fairy child with a heart of stone. And I did get all of these in hardcover because all of my Folk of the Air series books are in hardcovers. I'm kind of curious to see what these hardcovers look like. I hope they have something. <gasps> they do. Literally the only reason I ended up getting hardcovers for the Folk of the Air series versus paperback is because the hardcovers actually had really cool images on like the hardcover itself. And the Stolen Air series has the same thing and I'm so excited. They each also have like their own color. So this one has kind of like this metallic, kind of like light, almost teal blue color. And the cover image is of a like fox, I think, with like a little heart in his mouth. How freaking cute. Maybe it's a wolf. Now let's see what's in The Prisoner's Throne. Ooh. Okay, so this one is the color red and it has a bird with a ring. Now let's go ahead and see if our little novella has anything fun in it. I mean, right off the bat, the end papers are really cool. It's got like some like acorns and leaves and things. There's nothing better than like taking a dust jacket off and like seeing something cool like this hidden underneath it. So we have the title of the book. The detail on this little moth up here is kind of crazy. I don't know if you're really gonna be able to see it because of the glare, but yeah, it's got like super dainty little like lines in it, but also too, I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's supposed to be like illustrations and stuff in this one. We've got another little picture. Is there any, yeah, I was gonna say, is there any like full length pictures in like the next page with a full length picture, so. This book haul over like any other book haul that I've ever done is like leaving me with too many good books to read. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna pick what to read first. Ugh, move these over here. I have one more box from Amazon, but it's at the bottom of this stack. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit and dig into some Blackwell's boxes, which are always like extra exciting because I like special order them to get them from the UK. If you're unfamiliar with Blackwell's, it's basically a UK based bookstore. And if you're in the US, you get free shipping. And on their website, it does say that they don't provide tracking with your shipping, but I will say about 50% of the time I do. And uh, a lot of times they're cheaper, honestly, than the books that you get from here. For example, actually the uh, whole Never After series I've purchased from uh, Blackwell's because each of the books were like 11 to $12 versus here, I think they're like 18 or something like that. So anyway, these never like rip in one go. 
This is A Touch of Chaos by Scarlett St. Clair. This is another auto by author from me. I read A Touch of Darkness, which is the first book in this series, quite a while ago. I want to say like a year and a half ago. And I have been very impatiently waiting for this last and final book to come out so that I can kind of like complete the series, which since I actually have this one out, I'm going to go ahead and open this box because this has the rest of the series. <laughs> And this is definitely an example of me purchasing this from Blackwell's because the books are cheaper. Uh, I think overall I probably saved around $10 getting these from the UK versus the US. And I did actually pre-order this one. It's been sitting in this box and I've been dying to get into it. Essentially, if you're unfamiliar with the Touch of Darkness series, it's basically a Hades and Persephone retelling. And this entire series is in the perspective of Persephone. But then the author also came out with the Hades saga, which... I have somewhere. Oh, it's up there so I can't grab it. But essentially it's the same exact story as this original kind of series, but in the perspective of Hades, which is such a fun freaking concept. And this fourth and final book, A Touch of Chaos, is basically going to be combining or like tying the two series back together. And you are going to be getting both of their perspectives in this book. Very, very excited. I know I said I was going to read Elsie Silver's book next, but literally I don't know what I'm going to read next. But let me tell you, next month's TBR is going to be so much fun. <laughs> uh, and I actually do think I'm going to have you guys like help me pick. Sarah Caroli, I think that's how you say her last name. Uh, she always does, not always, but she's done a few different times where she has like her followers on Instagram like blindly choose her books. And I think I'm going to do that next month with a lot of these new ones that we're getting in because I literally cannot choose what I want to read next. But anyway, let's go ahead and finish this stack of books before my camera battery dies. <laughs> okay, this one I can tell is a hardcover. And I know exactly what it is. I am so excited for this book as well. <laughs> so this is Sunbringer by Hannah Kainer, which is the follow-up novel to God Killer, which I read last year, I think in the fall, and I really, really loved it. It very much has like found family vibes uh, between a God Killer and a God and a little girl, a knight, like a weird random assortment of characters that should not all get along. <laughs> they kind of start off separately, which is why it took me a little bit to kind of get in because you're kind of like going back and forth between the stories until finally their paths cross and then they continue on their journey all together. The dust jackets for God Killer and this book Sunbringer are what made me purchase them from the UK because I'm pretty sure these books are only available in the US in paperback. But the hardcovers for these are so pretty because although the imagery is the same, the hardcovers have like metallic touches in them. Here's what the back looks like as well. Ooh, oh my gosh. Okay. The end papers for this book are so pretty. I was not expecting that. The actual hardcover itself isn't anything special, but the end papers definitely are. Like, took me by surprise, as you saw. I uh, was not expecting that for some reason. They're really, really pretty. Very, very excited about this book as well. <laughs> and this is going to be our last Blackwell's package. Ooh, that was like a nice one. And let's go ahead. I kind of forgot what's in here, so let's see what is that all i see is like one huge giant book oh oh Ugh. i am so excited oh no first of all the exciting news this is the most recent book in the magnolia park series which i do believe kind of finishes off magnolia's story i've currently only read the very first book in the series but i have purchased all four of the books from the uk i have them all in the indie covers which is why i purchased it from blackwells because the indie covers are going to be only released in the uk so i did pre-order this very, very excited about it. However, <laughs> I ordered it also from the UK because I was hoping they would be the same size as my other Magnolia Parks. And there was, I think, two sizes available. And I think I got the wrong freaking size because this is definitely a lot bigger than my other Magnolia Parks books. This is vastly larger. <laughs> I mean, I'm very, very excited to have this book for sure, but like a little annoyed that the size is just like so totally different. So very, very different. <laughs> It's a really, really cool cover. It's kind of harder to see because of the glare. And then the back of the cover, honestly, this little deer in the bathtub is literally the cutest freaking thing ever. <laughs> Next up, we have our one and only box from Barnes & Noble. I haven't really been shopping at Barnes & Noble recently. Ooh, okay, I totally forgot what this was. I don't know how I forgot about this book because it's literally one of the ones I'm the most excited for. We have The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. This book is so pretty. 
I read the synopsis for this book in my spring releases video and I'm gonna be honest it wasn't something that I was like initially drawn to. It kind of has like a historical fiction kind of vibe which is never a genre that I do gravitate toward but I did read Ninth House and Hellbent from Leigh Bardugo and I really love those books so I'm sure I'm gonna like this uh and honestly I don't even care because the vibes of this book are so cool. First of all the cover has like a very kind of like gothic type of vibe and again I love like the shiny metallic elements but then also the end papers are really pretty as well and last but not least we have some black sprayed edges to like perfectly kind of go along with the dark gothic vibes <laughs> it's like crunching because of the sprayed edges <laughs> in a shabby house on a shabby street in the new capital of madrid luzia uses scraps of magic to get through her days of endless toil as a scullion that's right. So basically this is about a girl who has powers but she's been kind of like hiding them uh, but when her like keeper or something like her, her mistress discovers that she has the magic her mistress tries to use her to get into favor with the king but then it talks about like a war between the king and then the heretic queen and then it says determined to seize this one chance to better her fortunes Luzia plunges into a world of seers and alchemists holy men and hucksters where the lines between magic, science, and fraud are never certain. But as her notoriety grows, so does the danger that her Jewish blood will doom her to the Inquisition's wrath. She will have to use every bit of her wit and will to survive, even if that means enlisting the help of Gullion, an embittered immortal familiar whose own secrets can prove deadly for them both. So again, it very much reminds me of like historical fiction with uh, like a gothic vibe and some magic, which sounds really fun. So. Very, very excited about this book. Last but not least, we have our final Amazon box. And I literally, at this point, have no idea what's in here. <laughs> I feel like I've opened everything that I remember getting. Can you see? Can you see what it is? <laughs> oh! Oh my god, how did I forget about this? <laughs> this entire box is filled with just one series, which is this one. I don't know what it's called, but it's another one by Elsie Silver. And again, I do believe it's within the same universe as the Chestnut Springs. We've got Off to the Races, a photo finish, a false start, and the front runner. I have no idea in what order these are supposed to be read, but essentially, again, this is another series by Elsie Silver. And I went ahead and binge bought like the entire series because one, it's Elsie Silver, so I know I'm gonna like it. But also, like the Chestnut Spring series, this one is getting a cover change. And I really like the old covers. With the Chestnut Spring series, I actually really prefer the new ones. And I actually resisted reading the Chestnut Spring series for so long because I didn't like the covers, which now looking back, and I guess reading the series, like after reading it, I kind of do like the old covers, but either way, we have the new ones now. <laughs> and this series, again, is also getting new covers. And I don't know, I just kind of prefer these ones. But also too, even though this whole series is like out, the new covers are gonna be released uh, like every few months. Essentially, I would have to wait the entire year to get all of them. And I don't wanna wait an entire year to read the series, especially with how quickly I went through The Chestnut Springs like near the end. I'm not gonna read the synopses for all of them because I kind of don't wanna know yet. And I also don't know these characters, so it doesn't really mean anything to me. But one of them, this one, a photo finish, does have a character that we're mildly familiar with because it is Violet Eaton, who is the Eaton brothers from Chestnut Springs sister. So it says, I've seen every square inch of Violet Eaton's delectable body and she has no idea who I am. Well, that's creepy. <laughs> Until now, what happened between us online in our chats was meant to stay anonymous and in the past. Until it didn't. It's a small world, but Ruby Creek is even smaller. When I moved to the tiny town, the grumpy facade I've created slips when we're forced to live under the same roof. Every flush of her cheeks, every time her eyes flare with heat, every time she begs me not to stop, the ice I've encased myself in melts. She has me wanting things I can't want, things I've been dreaming about since I first laid eyes on her two years ago, things I don't deserve. I came back from the war a different man, but my scars are older and deeper than anyone knows, and I plan to keep it that way. I plan to keep my secrets hidden until her. This sounds so good. I'm so excited. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna briefly look at these really quickly, actually. Yeah, Billy, have no idea who that is. Ooh, I kissed my best friend's little sister and the world stood still. That's from A False Start, love that. And then Steven in this one, who I also don't know. So yeah, very, very excited about these books. And with that, those are the bajillion and a half books that I've purchased uh, the last couple of months. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, if you guys wanna help me pick out my TBR for next month from 
most likely like these pile of books. Follow me on my Instagram. I have it linked down below always. Today is the 16th of April. So most likely in like a week or so, I'm going to start posting on my stories to have you guys like help me blindly pick my TBR. I'll use a little emojis pretty much exactly like what Sarah does. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be doing. I've been wanting to do that kind of TBR video for a while. So I'm very excited to finally do it. Now I just have to deal with this like giant pile of boxes. <laughs> 